But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified <laughs> and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. <laughs>
And always, my resume was rejected. They look at the picture and they say, no way. <laughs> you know, I cannot play it. If we play it, they will flag us. <laughs> You know them, but you can watch it if you want to do the video later. You see the Muslim they target my channel, but if you add it later in your video editing, you can play it and let people see how stupid this region is, how racist it is. And then they start describing how Muhammad looked like the appearance. The appearance is so important, and there is a reason for this appearance to be so important because people judge by appearance. That's so true. People judge profit by their appearance. Mm. I wonder how Abraham, he looked like when he is so old man. <laughs> I mean, what appearance? <laughs> you know, life is not fair. If Allah chose you to be a prophet, you will look so good. Even if your mother and father look so bad. <laughs> you know, when I, when my mother she gave birth to me, my father he, you know, he wanna like he was seeking revenge from my mother for such a baby. So he said, he looked like you. To my mother. My mother, she said to him, No, he looked like you. This is how bad that situation is. <laughs> what the heck is this? And then they continue describing for you how amazing this prophet is. His face would eliminate. The prophet is made of LED. Don't say Islam is racist. His face have to eliminate. Maybe maybe he is an African? No, he is so white. Look, look, look. Abiyadun ka'annama sayrun min fiddah. What does that mean? He is white as if he made it from the best of silver. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was white in complexion. You see the coward, he did not translate exactly. <laughs> he did not translate exactly why he's in Arabic. <laughs> you white in complexion. And you are saying to me, why the prophet did not? I mean, why, why in the, anyone in the world will not convert to Islam now? Look, he's white. He's white. And he is so, he, he, he is LED. I mean, when the first time LED is discovered? Just let us be honest here. Is, you, is your face LED? It's not. Your face is not even halogen, which has caused a lot of energy. The prophet is LED and he is using the, and, and there's different video. I mean, this video came in my way. This is the first time I see it. Uh, I saw the prophet of Allah. He lay and look, always the moon is there. I mean, and they are comparing the prophet with the moon. We saw a video like this before. I remember the guy, he almost cried. He looked at the prophet, he looked at the moon, he looked at the prophet, he looked at the moon. And the conclusion is, the prophet is whiter than the moon. So our topic today, why Allah, he converted to Islam. I, I, think, I think we are done. I think, do we need any reason? And remember, Muhammad is the best of all prophets. So that means he is the most handsome too. Hmm. Uh, I have a book in Portuguese. Yeah, we have. But I think uh, uh, Amazon is, uh, it took it off the shelf. <laughs> I will see later what I would do. I might, I might post it for free. Just, just to get get the Muslim busted. You know, they think they think they can fight me. I will pause it for a free. <laughs> so, well, and anyway, uh, and this way, many people will read it even more. Uh, you know, no, we cannot play the videos because you know we play a little short and they make a, a drama about it. So this is the only religion have a very special scenario because it's a white supremacist cult. 
focus too much in the look of Muhammad and as you see Muhammad he have you know when they say the Prophet have to be so good in looking and then they said he is white so he can't be so good in looking unless he is white extremely white There's a strong connection between your color and you being sent by God. According to Muslims, and here, here you see the, the, the madness. When they go and speak to black people, they say to them, you know, Jesus, the white man, and do you know what the white man did to you? And do you know what the European white men, they did to your grandfathers? They will not tell them that we are the one who captured your grandfather and we are the one who sent them to the white man. And they will not tell them that in our religion, you cannot be a prophet unless you are white. And not only white, you have to be extremely white. There's a hadith <clears throat> we mentioned before. I don't know if you remember. This is a Muslim website. It's called what? The Sunnah Foundation in America. We are so happy to have you in America. Sunnah Foundation. I'm so glad. We mentioned this hadith before. And there's many actually, not only one. And this hadith says, how, uh, uh, sorry. If not you, I will not, I will not create the universe, Muhammad. So, everything we have is for the beauty Queen Muhammad. The reason Mars, Mercury, the Sun, the Earth, you and me, the frog, the lizard, the trees are exist just for the sake of Muhammad. And then we read, and this is a question, asking the Sheikh, Fatwa, as you see here, Fatwa, when you see Fatwa, that's mean, an answer from a high authority. Fatwa. Uh, if not you, Muhammad, I would not create the creation. So all the creation created just for Muhammad. And here you ask yourself, what is the purpose of Allah to exist? Is Muhammad. Why Allah is exist? You see, how we can prove that there is a God, his name is Allah, is exist. If we, if we ask a Muslim this question, they will say, well, the creation, look around you, the sky, the earth, uh, etc. So somebody created that, obviously Allah created them. And then we find that the proof of the existence of Allah is Muhammad. Because if not Muhammad, there's no creation. And if there's no creation, there's no Allah. And the drama continue worshipping a man. Here they are asking the question, here is the answer. There is many hadith in this effect. And here they are quoting to you some. Allah said when Adam made a mistake, he asked Allah, I ask you for the sake of Muhammad to forgive me. Allah said, what the heck Adam? How you know that, uh, how you recognize Muhammad when I have not created him yet? And here the things get more silly. You know, when Allah, he, before he created anything, he, he made a chair. He needed a chair to sit on. And then right away, Allah, he grabbed a pen, he created a pen. And then he started writing the name of Muhammad on his chair. The first thing he did, in, uh, that's it. He cannot even wait. He made the chair and he started doing graffiti. The first graffiti he got. Muhammad, 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 Muhammad. In the side, in the handle, in the leg, in the left leg, in the right leg, in the upper leg, underneath, in the top of the chair, in the, behind his head, behind his shoulder, in, everywhere. 
Muhammad, 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 Muhammad Rasulullah. So Allah here gets surprised when he heard that Adam, he knew Muhammad. I mean, remember, Muhammad is not exist yet. So how in the world Adam, he knew? So he asked Adam, how in the world you know Muhammad when I did not even create him? Allah was astonished, like, what the heck? You cannot believe it, by the way. If I am Allah, I would do the same. And here you ask yourself, I mean, isn't this the God who says he knows everything? How come he did not know how Adam he knew? Hey, Allah, he can read your mind. Allah can read your heart. Allah can read your whatever. Now Allah cannot even read how in the world Muhammad been recognized by Adam. Allah is in trouble now. So Adam, you know, he got the opportunity now to show Allah that he have a high IQ, not like him. <laughs> so he said to him, Oh Allah, when you created me and blow into my spine, where? Into my spine. Hmm. I lifted my head and so written on the arsh, which means the chair, the throne. La la ha la ha, Muhammad salu la ha. What the heck? Adam, he was reading Arabic when Arabic wasn't exist yet. He's written in Arabic on the throne of Allah that there is no uh, God but Allah and there is no prophet but Muhammad. So I got to know that you would only join your name with him who is most beloved to you. Do you see the word here, join your name with? And the funny, the Muslim, they say that uh, other believed are mushrikeen. Mushrikeen, which means they associate, they join the name of somebody with the name of God. This is what mushrikeen mean. Sharaka, sharaka is like, you know, partners. Sharika is a company of partners. So shark is coming from the word uh, ashraka or sharaka. So the Muslim, they accuse everybody to do shark. But as you see, Allah, he joined his name with the name of Muhammad. And here you notice that Muhammad already established Islam before, before Adam. And Allah converted to Islam because he's in love with Muhammad. If Muhammad was a Hindu, by the way, Allah will become a Hindu. If Muhammad was a Buddha or Buddhist, Allah will become a Buddhist. But Allah could not resist. And the proof of that, he wrote his name everywhere. And the funny is that the Shahada written saying there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. So what about to the 124,000 prophet Allah he sent? Why Allah don't write their names? Those poor guys did nothing to Allah? Nothing. Muhammad is the only one come because the rest actually all of them is just to prepare for Muhammad to come. Don't you remember? He's the last one. You know, I remember my mother, she was proud about me because they wrote an article about, uh, you know, somebody in the family uh, in the last, in the, in the first page in the book. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you know, in Arabic, the books start from the right to the left. You know what I mean? So I told her, Mom, uh, this is the last page. This is not the first page. Because in English, they start from the right, left, not from the right. How oh, I forgot. <laughs> and Allah, he put Muhammad in the last page of the book because he is the most the best. That's deep. And then we find out that even Isa or Jesus, he is exists because of Muhammad. Allah revealed to Prophet Isa, alayhi salam, peace be upon him. Oh Isa, a faith man. In Muhammad, in order your ummah, your people, to do the same. If Muhammad was not in existence, 
I would not have created Adam, nor I would have made heaven and hell. Mm. The Prophet of Allah said that Jibreel he come to him and said that Allah says if you were not created, I would not have made the heaven or the hell. The funny is the Muslim, they say to us, we ask Muslims, where is Allah, they say, in heaven? So where was Allah, if not Muhammad? He would be homeless. As you see, heaven and hell are created for the sake of Muhammad. So before Allah, he planned to create Allah, uh, Muhammad, there is no heaven, there is no hell, where Allah was. That is a question any Muslim can answer so easy, especially if your name is Zakir, uh, no, another Ahmed. <laughs> I mean, this YouTube suggests to me videos, I'm from the middle of nowhere. I, like I was, uh, uh, you know, looking at YouTube and then uh, debate Nader Ahmed with, with, with David Wood. <laughs> <laughs> I did not listen, but I just I just scroll like you know the bar so I can skip the stupidity. And the funny he was talking about that Jesus he ordered us to eat monkeys. <laughs> and then remember I remember that Nader Ahmed in Paltok he used to have a nickname as Monkey Box. <laughs> you believe it or not, his name is Monkey Box. This is his name, Impalto. Oh boy. Yeah, Jesus ordered us to eat uh, monkeys. Islam did not order us to have <laughs> And then Nadir Ahmad, he said to David Wood, he said exactly the same. You remember when he called me about Al Kahun? Exactly the same thing. <laughs> but for sure, with the enemy, with David, he can like, he can play a little bit. Uh, with me, we made him Shish Kebab Hummus. You remember? Okay, another. Is that alcohol good or bad? <laughs> Actually, if I play his debate here, we will die laughing. So I don't want to cause somebody heart attack. I'm really about. Yeah. But you know, those people, they have, Lord have mercy on them. Oh, I'm really no, no, honestly, his name in Pearl Talk used to be Monkey Box. That's what he called himself. I mean, Monkey Box talking about eating monkeys. And, and, and we, as a Christian, we've been ordered to eat monkeys. What is that? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh. So as you see here, you know, everything, everything exists for a reason, and the reason is Muhammad. I just walk outside, and I saw a cockroach. And I said to myself, why does cockroaches exist? The answer, Muhammad. And then the cockroach fly, is a flying cockroach. I said, why he have wings? The answer is Muhammad. The reason of everything is Muhammad. Did you lose your job? It's destiny. And why destiny exist? For Muhammad. So you lost your job because of Muhammad. Did you get a new job? Well, you got a new job. It's a destiny. Why do destinies exist? Because of Muhammad. Did you get divorced? Why you got divorced? It's a destiny. And why destinies exist? For Muhammad. And now we can solve all the problems in the world. We are not confused no more. Anything happened. Like, I have my phone here. And they, they said, they send an alarm, says, tornado warning, there's a storm. Torno, tornado warning. 
Why tornadoes exist? For Muhammad. To make it more simple for you to understand, why shaitan he fought? For Muhammad. When the Muslim they call for the Adhan, Shaitan he do fart. And by the way, this is confirmed by NASA. There's a, you know, NASA, in case you do not know, NASA is like a tribe of people who live in Brazil. Uh, you know, they call them NASA because, uh, uh, you know, they, they are like, all of them, they are women. You know, Nisa, you know, from the Nisa chapter, NASA. So all of them, those who you know NASA, are women. And as Ibn Battuta, he said, all of them, they have three uh, breasts. The most historian, famous historian, who visited the whole world, Ibn Battuta. The Muslim, they speak about him a lot. He's the only one discovered on an island that women only have three breasts. I don't know why not four, don't ask me. But this is true. So NASA, after a long study, short and wide, up and down, they did everything they can to prove that this is not true. They don't want to believe in this. But my friend, the same as what happened to the two scientists who hired by the Catholic Church, you remember the video? Who hired by the Catholic Church to prove that the fly does not have medicine and disease at the same time? Happened to them. They discovered that global warming happening because of shaitan. Because shaitan, he is farting methanol and a lot of gas. And imagine how many Muslims are saying the name of Muhammad and Allah every day. Five times a day, every Muslim he do that. Supposedly. So shaitan he have to fart. If the Muslims are one billion, he have to give five billion fart a day. Which is amazing. I mean, why do we pay for gas if we can just use the gas? You know, why we don't connect the anus of shaitan to a cable or a, 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 like a pipe? Collect all his farting and connect it to houses around the world. Get get energy for free. Why we pay? You know, the the the, uh, the propane you pay for, it's very expensive, and it's just nothing but fart. So why the shaitan fought because of Muhammad? Everything, everything happy in the world because of Muhammad. And here, by the way, shaitan, he fought because he didn't want to hear the name of Muhammad. You see, even how the, the, the name of Muhammad, how like amazing, so strong, you know? And shaitan, he think, stupid shaitan, stupid idiot. He think if he fought, he can stop himself from hearing. Good luck with that. And now the Muslims, they're using the Christian electricity, the Kuffar electricity, and they have big speakers all over Pakistan. And then we find in the Quran that Allah, he said that he witnessed. He took Shahada. If we ask Muslims, Allah, he took Shahada to whom? Who, who Allah, he witnessed to? In chapter 3, verse number 18, Allah, he said, there is no God but He. He who? See, if I am the one who is talking, why I say there is no God but He? Why I don't say there is no God but I? And how in the world that works? There is no God but I. Why I didn't say I am the only God and that's it? There's no God but I. You just deny existence of God, and you just acknowledge that, you know, deny that you is ex exist too, because you said, but he. So the one who wrote this verse, he cannot be Allah. And actually the translation is not too much accurate. Look, in Arabic it says, Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illahu. Then the stupid Arabic here says, "Wal malaika wa ulul ilmi qa'iman bilqist." 
But if you connect it, it will, it's going to look like that there is no God, but God, which is He, and the angels and the people of knowledge uh, doing justice. Well, what the heck is that? I thought the one who do justice is only God. Angels didn't do justice. Since when angels, they judge anyone. And since then, when people of uh, knowledge, they do justice. Because whatever knowledge you have, your knowledge is short. Therefore, your justice cannot be justice. As an example, if somebody kills somebody, you bring me two witnesses. If they are even lying, we agree that the guy did it. Even if they are lying, two witnesses. So how that can be just? So here you see the stupidity, and then it continues saying, and there is no, uh, there's no God but He. Again, you repeat the same thing. You just said that. He is the exalted, He is the power, He is the wise. This sentence doesn't sound wise at all. So when Allah, he took the shahada and he converted to Islam, why he did not put the name of Muhammad with it? You remember when we played the video of this guy, uh, the one the Muslims killed him, uh, Rashad Khalifa, you remember it? He said that Muslims, they are committing shirk. They associate the name of Muhammad with the name of Allah. And he's right. There is a verse in the Quran. It says that the mosque <clears throat> are made for Allah. So don't call in the mosque any name beside the name of Allah with Allah. Chapter 72, verse number 18. And the mosque, or the place of worship, are for Allah. Between two brackets, alone. So invoke not anyone alone with Allah. So what is the shahada is for? In the mosque of Allah, you should not mention any name with the name of Allah, for this is the place for Allah. And the funny, if you read the interpretation of this verse, the Muslim, they will say to you that the Christians, when they go inside their churches, they speak about Jesus. <laughs> so when the Muslim, they go inside the mosque, <laughs> they don't speak about Allah. All the time they are speaking about Muhammad. Muhammad, his power in bed. Muhammad, how white he is. Muhammad, how his poopoo smells so good. How the earth opened its mouth to take the poopoo of the Prophet. I mean, they never find the poopoo of the Prophet, by the way. Because he do it. Right away, the earth opened her mouth. Take it. In the moment. Even his space, his space is smell like musk. And that for sure, because as the video we saw, he looks so white. <laughs> so as you see, uh, hey, Palestine, my friend, give me a break, you and your, and your Israel. And uh, let me block you. You are, you are giving me a headache. And you and your stupid uh, argument. If you if you are against Israel, why Allah he gave the land to Israel? I mean, these people are so stupid. We asked them, who is the one who built the Jerusalem Muslims? They say, Prophet of Allah, he says, David and Solomon. 
It's okay. It gives in the city. The one who built it, he owned it. It's what your prophet said. The one who built the city of Jerusalem, according to the city prophet, which by the way, this is false. This is showing you that Muhammad is a fraud. How in the world he say that the one who built Jerusalem is David and... Uh... <laughs> I mean, this guy, Muhammad is, he knew everything. Muhammad, he knew everything. History, geography, you name it. So the city of Jerusalem is built by who? By who, Muhammad? What's wrong with this man? And then the Muslim, they make a drama, they want to take the city. Even your prophet, he said, this is not your city. Don't change my topic now. As long as you mention the Jerusalem, you see, why the city of Jerusalem is built for Muhammad? Why Suleiman and David, they built the city of for Muhammad? So it's obvious, isn't it? You know, those uh, Christians, Jews, they are arrogant. They don't, they try to hide the truth. I remember when I was in school, you know, young. The teacher, he keeps saying, the Jews, they took our city, holy city. We should take it back. Allahu Akbar, we should, one day we pray to Allah to give it. So I, I put my hand up. I said, sir, who is the one who built Jerusalem? He said, the prophet of Allah, he said, <laughs> Suleiman, the son of David. <laughs> and then I said, but is it Suleiman is a Jew? <laughs> he said, sit down, sit down. down. <laughs> what a stupid cult. I mean, even their stupid prophet agree that this is a city built by the Jews. And by the way, this is false. This is telling you that Muhammad is a fraud. And he is speaking, by the way, here, not only about Jerusalem, about Al-Aqsa. Al-Aqsa, you know, is built by Suleiman. So why the Muslim went to Al-Aqsa? Anyway, and this guy, he keep coming here, and, you know, like, you know, and he called himself Palestine, and he from Pakistan. Go to Palestine and see how they discriminate you. They wouldn't even give you a job as a taxi driver just because you're Indian. Let us see who is going to marry you, his daughter, just because you're Indian. Those are the most racist people ever. You will see a guy from Pakistan, he is so angry for, go there and see how they would treat you. Didn't you go to Qatar and see how they treat you? Did you see how Qatar, they treat the American? And they treat the Pakistani? They treat you not even as a five-class citizen or a human being? But if you are American passport, brother, they give you a car, brother, nice salary, brother, and you can drink alcohol, brother. <laughs> I thought I blocked you. This guy, he coming back. Let me block him again. I hope I did not block somebody by, by mistake. Don't come here, this guy, Palestine. I'm done with you. You are the person the Chinese spoke about in their prophecy. They said he lived as a donkey, never came back as a horse. So even your God, he says this is land was given to the Jews. And he never mentioned that this land is given to anyone else. What a stupid cult. Even your stupid, I remember once I was doing a seminar and Abdul, he put his hand and he was so upset and he have a paper in his hand. And this guy, he wrote the question like 10th century ago. And he said to me, I see you are, uh, you know, like uh, you are a brew Israel. And uh, don't you feel you claim you are Arab that they took your land from you? 
I said, you are a Muslim? I said, yeah. I said, MashaAllah. Like us, MashaAllah. Can you open for me the Quran, chapter 5, verse 21? And took him like some time to find it, you know, we are waiting. I said, uh, okay, I found it. He opened his phone. I said, can you read it? Give him the microphone, please. You know, give him the microphone. And he started reading. I said, see? Did you see what happened? He said, uh, what happened? He said, Allah gave the land to the Jews. He said, no, this is not the Jews. I said, read the verse before it. It says, Musa, he said, oh, my people, enter the holy land which Allah assigned to you. <laughs> you should see his face. His name was Palestine, I remember now. Yeah. True story about the name. So when Suleiman ibn Dawood finished building Baytul Maqdis, why the why the why Suleiman built the Baytul Maqdis from Muhammad? Why the tower of uh, what they call it, the evil tower in Paris is built for Muhammad? Why the the twin tower in New York was built? From Muhammad. So Al Qaeda can destroy them, brother. <laughs> Everything exists for Muhammad. I mean, the mental issue in this religion is beyond imagination. And then they claim that this is their land. But as you see, this is the, the you know, this is the, this, this cult. Teach that they are superior. Muhammad, he owned the world. Muhammad, he should conquer the world. Anyone who don't believe in Muhammad, he should treat it like an animal. This is why Muhammad, he said clearly that Muslims are the best of mankind and we are speaking about the white Muslims. The Arab. And this is why he mentioned that those Arab, the white Arab, they have a duty. The Quran says in chapter 3, verse 10, that you are the best for mankind who bring them with the chain round their necks till they embrace Islam. That is the message of Islam, not the message you see in CNN or in a Jazeera TV speaking about the peaceful messenger of Allah who brought peace for the world. If there is any Muslim would like to call us, if there is any Muslim would like to call us, if there is any, let me know. I will be happy to take you. I did not open my Skype yet, but in case. So here we notice that this cult is a white man cult. Muslims will be in heaven white. Boys in the heaven, they will be white like pearl. Women in heaven, they will be extremely white to the point you can see through their bones. You know, all my life, I wanted to have a woman like this. A woman I can see through her bones. Actually, I'm not interested with the see through, through bones things, but I am interested to see through their purse. You know? Like when you see a woman, like what the first thing you think about? What she have in her purse, you know? Because, you know, women are dangerous. I mean, look, I don't want to like, I don't want to get women against me now, but look at their nails. I mean, when you go in the wood, in the jungle, like, you know, I'm born in Brazil, as you know. I look Brazilian, by the way. Uh, I have, uh, you know, Brazilian, they have a blue, like a uh, radish. Uh, red eyes, you know, and uh, uh, you know, blue, like you know, so I look like you know, river. And I was 60 foot tall, like uh, uh, my father Adam, and I was born in uh, the Telenol land, it's called Telenol, no, not Telenol, sorry, the Thailand, Thailand. So, anyway, I was born there, and you know, like then I uh, uh, said to myself, I saw a woman, this is the first time I see a woman in my life, you know, and like they look different, by the way especially in Thailand. <laughs> anyway, true story. So I said to myself, what they have in their purse? And I could not find out. And 
I pray to Allah. I made a wish. And Allah, he answered my wish. Like, you know, in the, in the in Telenor land, you know, like they have something called Bar's Day. Like Bar's, Bar's Day. But I think it's called Bazaar Day, something like this. It's Bazaar anyway. Like, you know, this remind me when I asked my mother, uh, when I was born, mom, what day? She said, I don't know the date, but oh, but I know it was a bad day. Uh, you know, like, okay, so, so then, then I celebrate Bar's Day. And then, in the Bar's Day, you make a wish. And I made a wish to Allah. And Allah, he answered my wish. Like I have, you know, something like, you know, we are Arab, you know, so when we have a birthday, like we do TNT, like, you know, a cake. Like C4, TNT. Anyway, so, you know, you know, and then my wish came true. And then Allah, he made uh, the promise come true. And uh, he promised me, I will have a beautiful woman, Huris, who can see the, through the mirror of their bones. And now you ask yourself, so why is Allah, why he made us able to see the bones is through the marrow? First of all, how in the world Allah he knew about marrow? Hmm? Did you ask yourself? This is 1400 years ago. How he knew? Here it doesn't say that really. It says from behind the bones and meat. And now, because of this, your wife, she cannot take your credit card without telling you. She cannot take your hamburger and eat it in her belly, and she say, it's not me who ate it, it's your son. Because you can see everything. You can see even what inside the bones. What about inside the belly? You will see all the... <clears throat> it's it, IT there, you know? So, the and why Allah, he made those uh, things? For the sake of Muhammad. Why Allah, he made women so white and to the point we can see that through the bones? Because appearance does matter, as the video said. Appearance does matter. You know, you ask yourself, why does God did not promise us women who they are beautiful and they are black in heaven? Why everything have to be white? The customer is white. The servant is white. The boys are white. Allah is white. Muhammad is white. Jibreel is white. What the heck? And before you enter the heaven, Allah will give you a drink to make you more white. You know? <laughs> I don't want to take that drink. I am afraid of diarrhea. I hate it. Unbelievable. Do we have any Muslim to tell us how this religion function? The God himself convert to Islam because of Muhammad? The God himself created, the, even his chair created because of Muhammad. So why Allah don't want to say it? So now the chair of Allah is exists just for Muhammad. So Muhammad, where is Allah now? He's not in the chair. The Quran says, Allah, after he finished creation of the earth and the heaven, he rose upon the chair. If you ask the Muslim, what rose upon the chair? They mean, does that mean he is sitting? They say Allah knows best. That's funny, my friend. So is he standing on the chair? I mean, if he is not sitting in the chair, why he get a chair? The second you say chair, even there's a chapter in the Quran, it's called the chair chapter. You know? I mean, th that's really horrible. Even the chair have a chapter. So you are telling me that a chair have a chapter and big screen TV does not? Hmm. <sighs> Do we have any Muslim? Any Muslim have a comment? And by the way, Muslims, is the word kursi, is it Arabic? I mean, everything in this religion is a theft. And you know, the funny is, if you ask the Muhammadan about the kursi of Allah, they say to you that the kursi is not the chair, <laughs> it's, not the, it's not the throne. 
Uh, they say to you here, I mean, the Muhammad Arabic is really weird. If you go to chapter 22 uh, 55, they will say to you, look at the translation here. Um, His throne doth extend over the heaven and the earth. It, 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 the Arabic doesn't say throne. The earth is, the, the, the Arabic says his chair. Let us change the translator. What happened? Okay, let's see this translation here. Uh, his kursi, look at this. They did, not, they did not even translate those guys. I mean, what? <laughs> Maybe because they didn't know. His kursi extend over the heaven and the earth. But if you go and see the Muslim trying to explain to you, those who claim to be scholars, they say to you, the kursi is the feet of the chair. It's not the chair. What the heck? Since when? Kursi is a chair. Always was a chair. Hmm. And how in the world the Kursi of Allah, the chair of Allah, his size is exactly, you see here it says extends, it doesn't say that. It says whistle, which means the size, the same size, the same distance of the heaven and the earth. And obviously, Muhammad did not know that the earth is so small compared to the massive universe. Because you cannot be having the same size of the heaven and the earth unless the earth and the heaven have the same size. You know what I mean? This is a scientific mistake, but, you know, uh, as usual. And the Muslim, they used to call this one, actually, they call it Al-Kursi, as even as a chapter. Uh, do we have any Abdul here? Any Muslim? Anyone? Jesus was a carpenter, so Kursi was made by Jesus. Well, you know, the Bible says. That the Jews they say, isn't it this is the carpenter once? And then they say he is the son of the what does it mean that Jesus he was a carpenter? You know, in the in the Middle East, if you are a son of a blacksmith, they call you, they call the last name even blacksmith. Do we have any Mohammedan here? Any Muslim have anything to say? Allah himself takes shahada. Allah himself, he do not know what he is talking about. Allah he himself in chapter 2, verse number 255 says, La, 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 what? Who's saying that? Allah. La ilaha illa huwa. How Allah is Allah? And then he say Allah, La ilaha, it's but he. If Allah is the one who's talking, he should not use the first word. That's a mistake. And if he is the same person, he should not say he. Because he is the same person. Any Muhammadan?
Any Muslim? Yeah, I don't want you any here anymore. But you are silly. <clears throat> you always talk about things we are not talking about. And you are not Palestinian and you call yourself Palestine. And your God never mentioned that word. So obviously you have mental issue. Imagine I am from, you know, I am like uh, uh, from, let's say, from Nigeria and I call myself Pakistan. Something wrong with you. What you have to do with Palestine, if it exists. Even your God Allah never mentioned it. <clears throat> You know, even those in Pakistan, they have a very weird names. They are just trying to copy the Arab. Do you remember the ambassador who the Pakistani government sent him to Saudi Arabia? And he was rejected by the king of Saudi Arabia? His name is the biggest penis. And this is his name in Arabic. They use Arabic word, they do not know what they mean. So the Saudi, you can search, by the way, I'm not making things up, you can search it on Google. The Saudi king, when they give him the name, you know, because the foreign minister of uh, Pakistan will, you know, uh, will send a letter signed by the president that this person will be our ambassador. They will give it to the minister of Saudi Arabia. The minister of Saudi Arabia, they will give it to, they don't have a prime minister there. They have a crown prince and a king. So how in the world they will say in TV that the king of Saudi Arabia today, he shake hands with the biggest penis? You might think I'm, I'm, you might think I'm making things up, just wait. I feel like, I feel like I'm Allah now and you guys are not believing me. I don't know why. I mean, when everything I'm saying to you is coming uh, scientifically uh, from uh, uh, Naza. What's wrong with people? Okay, let me get you busted, all of you. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> Pakistan Ambassador Akbar I'm typing in Arabic, can you believe it? Okay yeah. This is foreign policy Foreign policy, very well known newspaper foreignpolicy.com Pakistani ambassador ambassador by the way ambassador you know like when I was in Ecuador I used to say it the same way Pakistani ambassador rejected because of his name is what in SFW what the heck is that I don't know what this word means his, his name is what in SFW, what the heck is that? And then here you see the name in Arabic. <laughs> oh. Anyway. Do we have any Muslim have any objection? Any objection? Okay, any conjunction? As long as objection, there's none. We take conjunction. Ah, that will remind me of doing the conjunction of the two C's. Mm. You remember the story of uh, Moses when he took his uh, servant Nun? Yeshua ibn Nun? And they took the whale with them? And then they get in touch, the, the whale got in touch with the fountain of uh, life, Ma'ul Hayat. And then the dead the whale came to back to life. Uh, you know? By the way, this is why I always stay. Like if you ask me now, how old are you? I'm like 16. Why? Because I got in touch with the fountain of youth. You know, when I was watching this, uh, the you know the funny this part of the Caribbean which is 
it's a it's a nice movie because it's a, a fiction, but it's a stupid movie in the same time. But fiction is stupid anyway. So, but the nice thing there that everybody is looking for the fountain of youth. And Muslims, they found it before anyone else. And who found it? A Jew, Moshe. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. And here you will see the story of Moses, how Allah, he told him, you don't know as, uh, as you think, there's a servant, his name is Al-Khudr, he knew more than you. So uh, Moses, he decided to join a classroom to take a special course from Al-Khadr. Al-Khadr is called Al-Khadr, which means green, because he was one day uh, thirsty, brother, and he drank from the fountain of life, and since then he never died, and he's always young, and he's green. Even when he sat in his ass on the grass, even if it's dry, the grass go green. This is why they call him Mr. Green. Here it says, um, Okay, look, look with me, look with me. Look, look at this. Uh, where, 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 where? Where? Ah, here we go. So they arrive, brother. They arrive to an area, there is a rock, and there, where, there was a spring. Okay? There is a spring of water. And then, uh, some of the water from the spring, uh, like a drop, a drop of water, brother, fall into the big wheel, which is in their back. Look, I think it's a mini wheel. So the water is called the water is called ma'ul hayat. Between the bracket, the water of life. It will be, it will be pure on them. And they will spring out like a seed spring. Brother. If you have like somebody is dead, you take some drop of water from this and you throw it there and he will come back to life like seed. You know? Yeah, true story. And this is the same story repeated here, but with more details, more nice details. So... Here it says, and uh, they arrived to a rock, and there was a water spring called Al Hayat. And none come in touch with it, its water, but became alive. So be sure, brother, don't let your mother in law to get close to it. Okay, brother? Advice from me for free never let your mother in law to have this water ever. Otherwise, she will live her forever, and she will follow you wherever, and you and your wife wherever you go. You go to picnic, you'll find your mother-in-law there. You go to dinner, you'll find your mother-in-law there. You go even to take a shower, you will find your mother-in-law there, and she's telling you, what are you doing in the bathroom of my daughter? So, brother, don't let your mother-in-law get in touch with this water, period. And none come in touch with it, but become a life. And I say to myself, why in the world Allah did not send a few drop for Muhammad? I mean, why this guy Al-Khadr, he stay alive, he stay alive, he stay alive. And why Allah is so cheap to give Muhammad one drop of this water and Muhammad will stay alive. Somebody saying here, this is kid, kid's fairy tale book. Okay, let me curse you now. May Allah, may Allah cut your water. Go to the, go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom, open the faucet, you have no water. I always, when I invoke Allah, a curse on somebody, it happened immediately, brother. As an example, once, I said, you know, uh, this is because I'm very religious, religious person. So, I, you know, like, uh, I curse somebody once, I, I said to him, may Allah look, make you look like me. He woke up in the morning, he looked like me. And then he killed himself. <laughs> When he saw what happened to him, unbelievable, true story. So brother, don't make fun. This is not the kid's story. This is the real story. We have witnesses. Okay, listen, you, you see the, the ignorant people. We have Moses as a witness. He, your Bible says Moses. Now you don't believe in Moses no more? We have Yeshua. 
Noon bin Yeshua. Is we with him? So we have two witnesses. Do you have any against that? We win. <laughs> we have two witnesses. You have none. <laughs> so if we go to court, who is the one who look like a kid now, huh? Respect yourself. So, and then you know they, uh, and then this whale slipped. I want to know how in the world he slipped. I thought he's inside like like a like they put him like a sardine can because the guy is dead. How in the world this whale is dead for many, many, many days, going all the way from Holy Land, all the way to Bahrain. It's like 2,000 miles, you know, and it would take them maybe two months to go there. Uh, and this whale did not sting. I mean, that's it. He is just dead body. And okay, okay. I thought uh, fish will, uh, or whale, they will, you know, okay. But anyway, maybe it would salt on him. They would salt, you know. He's dead, but they would salt. And salt will keep him like in good conditions. They had like they would maybe like a three thousand tons of salt on him to keep him uh, fresh, and uh, the bacteria will not. Uh, and I think they made him a drunk, a drunk a salty water before he died, you know, to keep his stomach uh, clear from bacterios. You know, bacterios. Uh, <laughs> and then, so some of the water of the spring fell over the fish. So it moved. Just close your eyes, close your eyes. Close your eyes and think about it. Some of the water, how in the world this happened? Shouldn't be careful? And how come the water touch the fish never touch mooses? What the heck? So see, so it's moved and it slipped out of the basket. Look, the heck, I will never put my fish in a basket. And enter the sea. Look like the spring of water in the edge of the sea right away. Or maybe the fish the drive that drive like 20 kilometers to go right away from the spring to the fish, the sea right away. So the the drop of water fall in the and this is a spring of water. And then the water the spring, the water, uh, you know, touch it, and then the whale became alive. And then like what he did, like was walking. He walked all the way to the beach. Now we go back to our uh, topic. Why Allah converted to Islam? I mean, are you crazy? All of those things Allah He made for the sake of Muhammad. And this is very, very exciting. So imagine yourself, you are Allah. And you do all those things. Isn't it worth it really to convert to Islam? It is. Because now Allah he is so happy. If not Muhammad, Allah will be lonely. If not Muhammad, Allah have no reason to exist. If not Muhammad, Allah he have no way to have even fun in his life. Why Allah he is exist for Muhammad? If not Muhammad, nothing is exist. Anyone? Yeah, by the way, uh, some people, they say, where is the last video I just made, uh, you know, yesterday? If you go to Patreon, you will click in it and you will find it. So what we do, uh, you know, we, we go live. And if the video is sensitive a little bit, we make it enlisted, but it's going to be appear or appearing in Patreon. So if you go to Patreon, you can click at the video there and you can download the video. Or watch it if you still you did not watch it. I don't know how many people download it yet. Uh, do we have any Muslim have any comment? Why Christian Prince is here today? Because of Muhammad. Why he go live today? Because of Muhammad. Who is the one who made Christian Prince speak against Muhammad? Allah. Why he do that? So he can punish me. Allah, he liked to punish people. You remember, there's a hadith that says, if you were not to commit sin, Allah will destroy you. Who remember the hadith? Yeah. 
Let us find the hadith in English. <clears throat> And this is telling you why Islam is the most serious, stupid cult ever. In every belief, the belief is supposed to encourage people not to commit sin, except in Islam. Sin is a requirement for existence. If you don't believe me, in front of you. Muhammad, he said, swearing by Allah, Messenger of Allah, PBUH, this is like a chemical thing. You know, Muhammad is a mix of chemical, very complicated chemicals, with the fire, with the fiction stories, the flying carpet, uh, you know, Allah, he sent him a dish of shish kebab, he ate it, he got the power of 40 men. So this is a lot of PBUH stuff. So he said, Allah Messenger said, by the one who is my hand, uh, whose hand my soul is, were you not to commit sin, Allah would replace you with people who would commit sin, and he then he seek uh, and then seek forgiveness from Allah, and then Allah will forgive them. Look at this game. Allah, he created a bunch of people, they commit sin, nothing, they did not commit sin, they did not do fornication, they did not do killing, they did not do steal, how boring. That is really, really boring. And this is not the reason Allah, he created us. Allah, he wants us to commit sin. Because if we commit sin, we ask for forgiveness. This is how Allah feels good. <laughs> this is telling you, you know, if a person, he... Uh, if you study the, the, a human being, a brain, if there is such a human being, he enjoy that people they do something wrong against him, so later they ask him to forgive them. That means he is mentally ill. And there's people like that, by the way. There's people they like to be victims. In order later, people, they apologize from them. So, Allah here, he implemented in the head of the Muhammadan by Muhammad that committing sin is your brand, is your signature, is the reason for you even to exist. If you don't commit sin, your, your, your soul existence is in danger. Allah will demolish you. Allah will whip you out of existence. And he will replace you. And this is telling you how sick this madness is. And this is destroy all the lies Muhammad he said before that he believe in the story of Noah, which is a copy from the Bible. Because in the story of Noah, why God he destroy mankind? Because of sin, not because it not commit sin. Why God he destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? Because of sin, not because they are committing sin. In that story, there, you know, he said to God, "What if there is like a seventy, you know, righteous person? Are we going, God? Are you going to destroy the city?" He said, "No." What about if it's fifty or ten? Or God said, "No." Even if there is only a few people, they are not. They, they are. There's still righteousness. God will not destroy the city. Here is the opposite. And this is telling you that Muhammad is a satanic person. He is encouraging people to sin. And he told them, don't just worry, just ask for forgiveness. You know, just commit sin, ask for forgiveness, I'll do sin. And this is exactly what Satan wants. Satan, he wants you to feel comfortable with your sin. Relax with it. Live it. Make it your lifestyle. And at every day, ask God for forgiveness and it's done. Do we have any Mohammedan here have an obje has an objection? Any Muslim? I will open my sky for a few minutes to see if there is any Muslim. If not, we will not ask anymore. Let us open Skype.
<clears throat> Just text me, please, if you are a Mohammedan, you like to speak to us, and I will call you immediately. All right, our Skype is open. Okay, this is from yesterday. This is from yesterday. This is today, but uh, 4 p.m. I don't see anyone from today. Do we have any Muslim would like to join us? Anyone? Anyone? May they, may they? Any Muslim? So you Muslim, you line up, you want to talk to Patterson, you want to talk to David Wood, you know, and here, uh, flat tire. Who there? And then I see in the comment, they say, Christian Prince, he debate only people who do not know. Why you don't bring me the people who knows? I don't even know who's calling me. There's only one scholar in the Muslim world, we have to admit, ultimate fault. <laughs> ultimate fault, please be upon him. Laws mean reality. Yeah. <clears throat> Can we ask questions not related to this topic? Maybe a different time we can, because you know, we wanna see if we can get some Muslims here. Anyone? Any Mohammedan? If you don't want to talk about this topic, we can't talk about <clears throat> anything like the miracle of the Quran. Anyone? I think the tornado might come before the Muslim call me. <laughs> they send the second message. Okay. I hope we will not lose electricity. And you know what? I don't think it's a tornado. I think this is shaitan is farting because somebody saying Allah Akbar. <laughs> they lie to us in those news and stuff, you know? Tornado, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, you can fool us. Tornado. Hmm. Any Abdul? Um, well, I will leave my Skype like on for maybe a few minutes, five minutes more. If not, we will shut it down. Any Mohammedan? May they, may they, may they. Oh, 
Well, it looks like they are agreeing with me, which is good. I mean, last year we have a, last year and this year, we have a very productive year. We have a lot of Muslims who left Islam. Amazing. This guy, he killed himself Adonai and he is a Buddhist. <laughs> All right. Anyone, any Muslim have any objection for what we are saying? What do you think about what your prophet is saying? That if you don't commit sin, Allah will destroy you. What kind of God? He will be angry from us for not committing sin. Anyone? I have a disagreement between signs and miracles. Mm. You see, in the Quran, the Quran never say the word sign, rather say the word uh, ayah. Ayah. See, ayah, when the, when the, when the Quran speak about miracles, don't never use the word miracle as a, you know, the word you know. It says ayah. Ayah is what Muslim they say, they say to you verse, right? They say ayah. In fact, ayah, is not a word mean verse. Ayah is something perfect. Something, a perfection, you know? So when the Arab, they say to Muhammad, uh, why Allah don't speak to us or he give us ayah? Ayah is something nobody can do, something nobody can accomplish. So you can say it is more than a miracle, actually. It is the perfection of something, whatever it is. So the Quran don't use the word uh, miracle. Always use the word ayah. And here you notice that this is a proof that Muhammad is, is, a, is a mentally ill. Because if ayah is a miracle, then how chapter 2 verse 106, Muhammad, he used the same word. He says, none of our ayah, we abrogate, or we delete, or we cause to be forgotten, but we bring something better. So if ayah is a perfection, and it's a miracle, how you abrogate something perfect and you bring something better than it do you see the word better do you see it all right we have somebody he's saying he want to call and look like he just created a, a, a skype account we will give him a chance <clears throat> so how Allah he make perfect Quran and then Allah will make better Quran than the Quran if the Quran is a miracle and then you claim that you can make better Quran that's mean the one who made the Quran first time is not perfect you know what I mean because perfect make perfection and he do not need to repeat the work twice to make it perfect or to make it better <laughs> Hello? Yes, my friend, you are live on your audio Uh Yes, sir. All right. What do you like to say to us? Are you watching? Uh, yeah. Huh? Uh, yes. What do you think about the verse we are showing on the screen? Um, you want to know what I want to think about it? Yeah. Shawty like a melody in my head. Okay. Well, I think you need to drink three times camel urine a day in the breakfast, before breakfast, in between. And then you will be fine. So as you see here, chapter 2, verse 106, prove to us that this is the most stupid God ever if he is exist. 
because how you say nobody can make Quran like the Quran, claiming perfection, and then you say any Quran we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, we will make something similar or better. And why you want to make something similar? If it is similar, why you want to destroy the first one? And how you claim that nobody, the word of Allah is preserved, and then you are going to destroy the word of Allah, and you are Allah. And then how you say that your word is better than other words, which is your words? Very stupid religion. Well, it's a summertime and there's a lot of cockroaches that like to sing. <laughs> uh, no problem. Any Abdul? Actually, this verse alone is is a, is the proof. It's a disaster. It is a great example of the stupidity of the one who made the Quran. Muhammad he could not remember the verses twice, so he recited here something. Then second day he says something else. So then he claimed that uh, okay, well Allah he caused it to be forgotten. Allah will give something similar or better. Don't worry, be happy. <laughs> You cannot repeat the same story twice, you know? Always either the beginning or the end or in the middle is different. If there is uh, any Islamic source for the lineage of Muhammad except Israeliyat? Well, there's not, those are not Israeliyat really, those are the Muslim creation. Well, the, the Jews, they don't believe Muhammad is from, uh, from Ishmael. They know where the Jews, they say that, you know? Nowhere. This is this is the, uh, the the creation. Actually, if you read the whole Quran, you will never find one verse in the Quran saying that Muhammad is from Abraham. Nowhere. So how come the Quran says Isaac and etc. and who is their father and you know give it details and when it's come to Muhammad, that's it. All what the Quran says about Muhammad, his name is Muhammad. Muhammad who we do not know. Who his father, we do not know. Who is his mother, we do not know. What their wife believe, we don't know. That's why when, when an idiot, he says to you, I don't believe in the hadith, ask him, who is, tell me about your prophet, who is he, who is his father? He will start telling you, his father is Abdullah, his mother is blah, blah, blah. But this is from the hadith, and get him busted. Without the hadith, Muslims, they know nothing about Muhammad. There's nothing in the Quran about him. Uh, do we have any Muhammadan? I guess we don't have any. So guys, I want to say thank you. I hope we have uh, we covered the topic today. Uh, for some reason, uh, not many attending, even though this, uh, this channel have a huge number of subscribers. But I don't know, uh, YouTube maybe don't send notification. So don't forget, you can go to Patreon and you do not need to make donation. People think when we say go to Patreon, they think that they have to make donation. Membership is for free. And you will be able to update, receive updating or update immediately when I post something there. Subscribe. Uh, so you can be notified when we go live. Uh, and as you see, our uh, what we do here is nothing but a classroom sharing information. It is... Maybe it's funny, maybe entertainment for some, but the purpose is not fun. The purpose is to have halal fun. Remember, halal fun. We have to have a fun which is not killing time. It give us education. It arm us with knowledge. So nobody can fool us and nobody can fool our children. Muslims are very well trained to attack Christianity, but with little truth, not training necessarily, truth. You can destroy all of Islam so easy. But before you speak to Muslims, you better know very well how to get them busted with their lies. This is why you see Christians who do not know anything about Islam, they don't do good when they speak to Muslims. Because Muslims all their life, since they are early age, 
they train to attack Christianity. Actually, they pray five times a day, and they, the last verse in, the, in their prayer that says, please Allah, don't make us the same as the cursed Christians and the lost, the lost, uh, lost Christians or the cursed Jews. So this is the fifth, the five time prayer day. Don't make us like the lost Christians and the cursed Jews. Five times a day. The first thing in the morning he do. In your church, the priest they themselves did not know anything about Islam. So how you will know? So here we do what your priest cannot do, because he's ignorant. Sadly, our churches became a place of rituals, not a place of education. When Jesus himself, he was standing between the crowd. He was doing education not rituals. Jesus don't do rituals. Jesus teach. Jesus he preach. Jesus he give parables. Jesus he debate. When Jesus said to the Jews, what, what say you about the Messiah? They said he is a son of David. Then he said, well, if he is a son of David, then how David call him my Lord? That is a debate. Our churches today, they open the page. Today is what? May 31. They have a book and they have a speech about that day. They don't even make their own speech. They have a book printed by somebody. Today we will speak about this topic. And maybe the topic is not what you need for today. Because every society, every community, they have their own pain. They have their own problems. Here we do what your priests don't dare even to do. So I hope you are enjoying our education. Share our videos. Feel free to translate to any languages. I wish we can have more people who can translate to Japanese. This is a language nobody is translating into. So if you are a person from Korea, from Japan, from etc., feel free, please, to translate my videos. You can make short ones. Any any language, any language is, is welcome to try. No, and you can, I don't mind if you uh, have advertising in your video channel. Why not? Good, you know, good for you. I don't mind people using my videos even to make income. The important for me is the message to be delivered. So I want to say thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And I hope our knowledge is be shared and taught to you to others. We are here, all of us, we learn from each other. I might be knowledgeable about something, but I might be ignorant of something else. This is how life is. We learn from each other. So let us teach, let us be, Life-changing people, not people who just receive, keep to ourselves. Start with your family, start with your kids, so when they go to school, nobody can deceive them. Even if your kids are growing kids, still they can be vulnerable for evil. Share with them the truth, and the truth will set them free. Thank you, God bless you, and see you soon again. Take care. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran is mentioned, if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, 
Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him, 